What's up guys? We're back. It's Friday and so you know what time it is. And today we got a clap back. We got clap back from Paul Saladino. So Paul responded to my response to his video about broccoli is Let's see what Paul has to say. He did a reel. I'm gonna watch the reel. And he also did a story series about this particular topic. I say this in some of my short form content and I recently just got called out for saying there's not randomized controlled trials in humans to say that broccoli is harmful. But here's my take. I actually don't think you need randomized controlled trials in humans when you have significant clinical experience. I've seen hundreds, if not thousands of people improve gut issues, skin issues, thyroid issues, from cutting out broccoli, kale, other cruciferous plants from their diet. And these plants contain compounds that can inhibit the absorption of iodine at the level of the thyroid. And animal models, like in pigs, who have guts that are pretty darn similar to humans, giving raw broccoli to them causes increased DNA breaks, which sounds like it could be damaging the gut of those pigs. As I tried to say in my content over and over, if you're thriving, why change anything about your diet? But I make this content for people who are continuing to suffer in the hope that they will find improved health from these ideas that I've seen benefit so many people in my clinical practice and online. I appreciate the criticism and I look forward to future discussions like this. And I hope that this content will be beneficial to a lot of you out there who may continue to struggle with health issues and aren't finding answers elsewhere. So that's a pretty significant walk back. Now, the first part of this that I wanna address, in, in, in the story series he put up, he says, well, scientific research isn't perfect, you know, X, Y, Z. Nutritional science is complicated. We don't have perfect studies for every question. There are a lot of humans who continue to suffer with thyroid issues, autoimmune issues, fatigue, pain, fibromyalgia, etc., who aren't really finding answers, often doing what mainstream nutritional science, or mainstream medicine, or even alternative medical sources are recommending to them. Okay, this is a unicorn fallacy. Just because scientific research isn't perfect doesn't mean we back it up to the dumpster and dump all of it in the trash. And oh, by the way, he's still citing scientific research papers in animals. Where are the human studies? Now this video came about because I put up a comment asking for him to show any human control trials demonstrating that broccoli caused weight gain, reduction in BMR, or any kind of negative impact to the thyroid. And of course, he couldn't do that because they don't exist. And in fact, there are human randomized control trials showing that it doesn't negatively impact the thyroid and that it doesn't cause you to gain weight. Uh, in fact, if anything, it helps with weight loss. So in Paul's original video, he said, you know, you don't want to eat broccoli. It has isocyanthanates that can inhibit the absorption of iodine, which is going to negatively impact your thyroid, which can cause a lowering of your metabolic weight and weight gain. The research doesn't back that up and if anything says the opposite. So there's nothing to support what he's saying in humans and if anything, there's the opposite. His response to that, since the studies don't support what he's saying, is to then try to say, well, you know, research isn't perfect and we don't need randomized control trials. I've seen this in my clinical practice. Where is your clinical practice registered? You didn't include clinical practice you included comments from Instagram. So let me get this straight. Scientific research comments on Instagram. Here's the problem with those comments of people saying, oh, I cut out these cruciferous vegetables and all these issues got better. I can find the same anecdote for vegans. You can literally find in vegan comments these sorts of anecdotes of, oh my God, I cut out meat and it healed my autoimmune condition. I cut out meat and I feel so much better. I cut out meat and it fixed my gut issues. You can find the exact same anecdote and that is the problem with anecdote. We have to ask ourselves, what is the value of anecdote? What is the value of any human's personal experience? And legitimately, one human experience, who knows what's going on? There's a lot of variables. But when that number is hundreds or thousands of people who benefit from doing something like cutting broccoli or cutting kale out or cutting spinach out of their diet or cutting more vegetables out of their diet or doing elimination diets in general or eating less plants in their diet. It's just the things I'm familiar with because of the space that I occupy. Then it's, I think it's worth looking at that. How do we decide whose anecdote has more value? He does say, well, I've said, if you're thriving, you know, keep doing what you're doing. But that's not what you said when you say broccoli is 
it, Paul. These are your words, not mine. It can inhibit the absorption of iodine. That is going to lead to your thyroid function being impaired. It's going to lead to a lowering of your metabolic rate, and it's going to lead to weight gain. Those are your words. Here is what I would have been fine with Paul saying, because I said this to him in a DM. It's fine to have an opinion. Just admit when you don't have research to back it up. I do that all the time. I'll be giving you guys an opinion. I'll say, you know, this is my opinion. There's not really much to back it up. Or like even in my reel the other day with Andrew Huberman, I said, you know, there's some evidence that the gut microbiome can use some insoluble fiber, but it's in mice. And to his credit, in this video, he says, well, this study was in pigs. But again, why are you picking out animal studies when human studies existed? If there was a human study on insoluble fiber and the gut microbiome and whether or not they can use it, I would have cited the human study if I was aware of it. I wouldn't have cited a mouse study. I think that if we are limited in what we talk about in our ideas in the nutritional and health space by things that are only discussed or addressed by randomized controlled trials in humans, we're a little bit myopic. That's evidence limited, in my opinion. And when there are legitimate mechanisms by which many of the compounds in plant foods could be harmful for some people, not all people, but some people, I think it makes sense to ask the questions about whether those of us, those of you who may be suffering with autoimmune issues, thyroid issues, skin issues, fatigue, pain issues, who aren't finding answers, might benefit from cutting out some of these foods. That's why I think it's important or interesting to say, broccoli is kind of So the problem is, there are human studies for these particular topics. Paul is omitting them, not talking about them, and then is using comments on Instagram as clinical practice, which that's not clinical practice. And Paul, this is obvious selection bias. People who comment on your stuff are people who have already bought into the carnivore diet or kind of a meat-based diet. They're already going to be coming to you with positive feelings about it. It's like me saying, well, you know, flexible dieting must be the solution for everybody because look at all these positive comments I get about flexible dieting. That's because people know me as somebody who popularized flexible dieting, so they're much more likely to tell me the positive stuff that they've experienced. Like, you, you really have to have self-awareness when you're doing this sort of thing because if not, you really will feel like you found the solution to everything with this one diet trick because you're getting so much positive feedback. It's because you created a cult-like community. I have already spoken to people who did carnivore, who had negative health outcomes, and you know what they said? They said either I didn't share it with anybody because I was too afraid of how people would respond in my own community, or I did share it and I got blocked from a Facebook group, or people shamed me, or people told me I was doing it wrong, or they told me I was lazy. You're seeing the positive, you don't see the negative because you created a cult-like community. Let's talk about evidence. This content that Paul does where he say, well, broccoli has isocyanthanates in it and those can inhibit the absorption of iron which is gonna impact your thyroid and lead to weight gain. I can do the exact same thing for an isolated compound in meat. Let's give it a try, shall we? Oh, and by the way, I'll use a human study and not an animal study. Meat contains compound NUE5GC. NUE5GC may have negative impacts on thyroid. In fact, in people with Hashimoto's and low thyroid, there is a human study showing that there is a prevalence of anti-NUE5GC antibodies. That is much stronger evidence that meat can negatively impact your thyroid than his, if we do A equals B and B equals C and C equals D and D equals E, then A equals E. This is a much stronger link. Now that being said, I don't think meat is going to negatively impact your thyroid, but you have to be intellectually consistent. First of all, if we're worried about isolated compounds in broccoli, then we have to be worried about isolated compounds in meat. Secondly, if we're going to value anecdote, we have to value all anecdote. And thirdly, if scientific research isn't perfect and we shouldn't rely on it, then you can't invoke scientific research when it benefits your position, but then completely ignore it when it doesn't benefit your position. That is called cherry picking and is intellectually dishonest and disingenuous. And many times, as I hope you guys have noticed, I will often give the devil's advocate argument for something or the other side of the coin because I want you guys to understand both sides of the argument and I also want you to understand why I think the side I'm taking 
or the stance I'm taking has more evidence to support it than the counter argument. That is why. Paul said he is open to a discussion and that he wants me to come on his podcast. I am not just going to go on somebody's podcast where they can talk over me and control the pace of things, but I am more than happy to debate Paul on a neutral third party podcast. In fact, we have already been talking about this for months and we have a podcast picked out. It's just been very difficult to get things aligned, but we will, if we can't do it on this particular podcast, then we will find one to do it on because I definitely want to have some of these discussions with Paul where we can cite evidence. Well, hopefully we can cite evidence and have a further discussion that hopefully will benefit many people. So I do give Paul props for addressing it and I do give him props for slightly walking it back but I feel like his logic is very inconsistent in how he's applying it. Let me know your guys' thoughts. Leave a comment and I'll catch you next week.